Hello, folks. I uh, first of all congratulate all of you on the work you did for your journey project. I think there were some kick-ass results, some great processes that were um, attempted and questioned and pushed through. And I think um, the project for the Limitation of Wonder went really well. I was really heartened by uh, all of your hard efforts. I have um, an older PowerPoint that I'm going to sort of use for a demonstration of um, the idea of warm and cool colors and using that with a figure. I didn't really have time to make a demo to create a piece um, for this. Um, just <laughs> life is in the way right now and making the best that I can with what I have and I already have this presentation ready. So warm and cool colors. Really they're just terms we use to describe color difference. If you think the colors of fire, red, yellows, oranges, the colors of ice, blues, purples, and greens. Green kind of fits in between the two. Um, purple can kind of fit in between the two because green has yellow in it. Purple has red in it. But basically the division is warmer colors we describe as the colors of fire, warmth. Cooler colors we describe as the color of ice, cool. That's uh, not really an actual thing that exists. It's just a way we can talk about color and color difference. So sometimes when you make a gray, your gray can be warmer because it has more red or yellow or orange in it, or it can be cooler because it has more blue, um, purple, and green. Green's probably the tricky one because greens really kind of slide back and forth pretty easily, but they can still talk about color difference, and that's really what we're all about. Two ways to approach using warm and cool. One is the idea of light versus shadow. Generally, light is warm. Shadows are cool, not a rule, but a principle. Um, sometimes it's the reverse. Sometimes you get warm light and warm shadows, but most of the time your light is warmer and your shadows are cooler. Often the color of your light, if it's a yellow light, your shadows will tend towards purple. A orange light, your shadows tend towards blue. And a reddish light, obviously, shadows will tend towards green. That's just a tendency, again, in a pure world of science, that would happen all the time. In our world of complexity and multiple light sources, it rarely happens quite so cleanly. But that's a general principle you can use. The other way to think about warm and cool is the idea of object or figure versus background. Generally, figures are warmer and the backgrounds are cooler. Again, not a rule, just a principle. We have, we're alive, our skin is warm, warm things come forward, so you want your figures to generally to be warmer than the space they're in because they'll stand out, they'll feel alive, and so on. Again, not a rule, just a principle, but it's a rule and principle that is, it's not a rule, sorry, it's a principle that tends to work. And that's really what we're about, is what things work more often than not. Um, I have this old sergeant uh, figure study that he did when he was a student, actually, he was about 22, I think, when he did this. It's just a study of um, a figure in a space. I took the space out because I just want to use what is basically a warmer figure and put it against different backgrounds and through the manipulation in Photoshop, change the temperature of some of the um, qualities on the figure to sort of show you what that can do. So warm figure on warm background, mm, it's okay. It stands out because of value, because of mark making, um, but it does tend to flatten the image out a little bit. There's not much color difference. Maybe the shadows are a little bit cooler. They have a little bit of a purplish quality, barely, but the figure kind of doesn't really do as much as if you have a cooler background. Uh, blue backgrounds, green backgrounds, purple backgrounds work great as cool backgrounds, especially blue, because the color difference is really incredibly apparent and the figure pops out. One thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure how full figure you're going to work versus portrait. If you're putting a figure in space, a cast shadow, I'm a proponent of cast shadows everywhere, all the time. Cast shadows do two things. They connect your figure to the surface they are cast onto, and they tell the story of what that surface is. So in this case, a floor with a cast shadow casting across the floor, it shows the figure solid casting a shadow and it connects the figure to the floor. And now you see the angle of the floor and the perspective of the floor by the, the direction of the cast shadow. Uh, I am, oh, this is not working because it's not in presentation mode, which I cannot record at the moment. So this is a weird cropping. I think we're suggesting you put your figures more in the middle of the page, Put some air around them, make it easier, 
if you're going to crop it, strange croppings can be great. They can be done for effect. They can done, be done for a reason. But if you're doing a study where the intention is color and wanting to make your colors work, make it simple. Put the figure in the middle. Make it work that way. Uh, it's just an easier lift because our focus, our energy is going to be spent on the color and the values. So you don't want to fight design. Um, if you want to challenge yourself with design and make a, a more um, aggressive design, that's great. One thing we can do is we can always check our values with Photoshop. That's a easy thing to do. Uh, you just desaturate it and the algorithms are fairly accurate. Sometimes the values don't always work out. Photoshop has a hard time telling the value of yellow for some reason. Yellows often become a lot darker than they actually are um, because of their saturation. But in this case, we can see, yeah, the values are pretty tight. It's a Sargent painting, so it's already done. We're not going to quibble with it. Um, but there's the question would be, what is the value of the background? And the background value is fairly neutral, a little darker, so that some of the lights pop out. Um, a couple of variations on a theme. I have a uh, the sort of starting place for the figure where we started. I didn't put the cast shadow in here. Um, the figure's fairly warm, a little bit more in the yellow realm, I would say. There's a yellowish cast to it. Some of the shadows have a sort of brownish, um, reddish tone maybe with a little hint of purple against the blue. They kind of stand out. Uh, in this case, this figure tends to sort of move along the lines of warm figure, cool background. Warmer light. Shadows aren't that cool, actually. Um, in this, this version, I've punched the saturation up quite a bit. Uh, the, the lighting seems more orange now. Uh, the, the blue seems to pop out more. There's a bigger degree of difference between warm and cool. Um, so it sort of stands out differently. Then these shadows, actually, because of the nature of Photoshop, have actually warmed up even more. They've gone from a sort of brownish, maybe slightly purplish gray into a much warmer tone. So even though I said generally light is warmer, shadows are cooler, in this case, most of the shadows have warmed up with the light, with a few darker shadows sort of retaining a little of their cool temperature. Um, but the bigger issue that we're sort of talking about with this sort of um, possibility is the figure's warmer, the background is cool, and if we're consistent with that, then the figure will pop out. And that's a pretty powerful way to, to organize your colors and your objects against backgrounds. Um, the next piece, um, or the next piece, not my piece, it's my uh, my interpretation uh, through the power of Photoshop, is a, is a kind of an interesting one. I took that initial warm-on-warm -warm figure, and I said, you know... What, what can I do with this? What can I do to change it? So I took that orangish background and I made it more of a sort of greenish gold. That's kind of what I would describe it as. So it, it's a cooler background by, by all means compared to the first one. Is it a cold background compared to the blue? It's not. But in degrees of difference, it's a much cooler background than what we started with. Then I took the figure and I actually shifted the temperature a little bit. I shifted a little bit more towards the pink realm, and as I shifted it towards the pink, an interesting thing happened. The lights seemed to warm up. They still retained a little bit of their orange-yellow quality, but they're more pink and orange and yellow, if we could describe it that way. But the shadows actually shifted really nicely into purples. Uh, and these purples actually really feel really luminous in a way. Um, and one way you can check yourself with your shadows is as you move your eye across from light, the lights are a little easier, into shadow, does it still feel like there's skin present in that shadow color? And I would say in this Sargent piece, especially in the legs, you just really feel like, yeah, that's that sort of soft shadow with reflected light moving up and in. And the basic structure of a warm figure and a cooler background, not a cold background, but cooler, is retained. Uh, so there's kind of that synergy of warm and cool color relationships working together. And the, the idea is the difference between the one on the left versus the one on the right, we've just pushed the temperature difference further. And I think the one on the right sings more clearly. The figure stands out more. It has a more luminous quality by the temperature differences between light, between shadow, and then between the background space. And then the shadow itself has a little bit of blue in it to make it sort of a bluish green gray, which feels like it connects to this this gold gray color. Um, one thing, can I? No, I can't. I do not have the power. This was done in Photoshop PowerPoint. It has limited um, possibilities. So at the end of the day, 
just think, lights are warmer, shadows are cooler, figures are ten- generally warmer, backgrounds are much cooler. That's a principle that will hold true whether you're doing a portrait, whether you're doing a figure study, whether you're doing a still life even. You can just use that principle of organizing your colors a certain way, uh, and it will hold together. Um, hopefully that helps, folks. I um, Again, I'm a little limited on, on time and what I have available to sort of create this, what I would loosely call a demo, but hopefully it explains some of the principles that we're talking about. Um, all right, thank you. I uh, look forward to seeing what you got next week. Email with questions if you want.